In this video, we'll look at proving trig identities. And we've done some of this stuff already. Um, so there's not going to be any new particular concepts here, but we'll talk about some of the strategies that we can use to prove these identities. Now, proving, proving identities are a little bit like solving puzzles. So there is no real one way to go about proving identities. And in a lot of cases, there are there are several ways that the identity can be proved. So it's kind of like doing a jigsaw puzzle. You can't really tell somebody how to do a jigsaw puzzle, but there are some strategies for doing a jigsaw puzzle. Like often you might start with the edge pieces, or if there's a big red flower, maybe you get all the red pieces together because you know they're going to fit. So there are some strategies for proving identities. And one of the first things is to we've talked about this before, convert everything to sine and cosine. So everything to sine x or cosine x. And that's going to work for this particular question here. So draw the line down the middle. We can work with the left side. We can work with the right side. But we can't move things from one side to the other because this is not an equation. It's an expression. We're going to show that this expression on the left is equivalent to the expression on the right. So I'm going to convert everything to sine and cosine because there is, there's no sine or cosines in this expression. So tan x we know is sine x over cos x. And cosecant x we know is 1 over sine x. And secant x we know is 1 over cosine x. Those are the identities um, that we've learned before. So I've converted everything to sine and cosine. My right side is done. It's as tidy as I can make it. But the left side, I can do some simplifying here. So the numerator, sine x times 1, is sine x. The denominator is cos x times sine x. And these conveniently will cancel out. And we're left with 1 over cosine x. And so we've now proved the identity. The left side is the same as the right side. So converting everything to sine or cosine x was what we needed to prove this identity. Let's look at this example. So everything sine and cosine x here, if we were to try this, tan x is sine x over cosine x. Cotangent x is cos x over sine x. Let's do the line down the middle here. And negative tan x would be negative sine x over cosine x. So in this case, we've converted everything to sine and cosine. And the right looks pretty tidy, negative sine x over cos x. But the left is a bit of a mess. And um, we've got everything sine and cosine. So one of the tricks we sometimes need to do, another little strategy, we'll call this number two, is get a single fraction get a single fraction in the numerator and a single fraction in the denominator, and then multiply by the reciprocal. Now let me show you what, what I mean here. So we now have a, when we've converted the tan to sine over cosine, we've created a fraction within the fraction. We've got a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator. But we've got to get common denominators up here, because we want just to have one fraction up here. So instead of writing 1, I'm going to write 1 as cos x over cos x. And here, this has a denominator of sine x. So before I can subtract these things, I'm going to write 1 as sine x over sine x. So now in the numerator, I have cos x minus sine x all over cos x. That's one fraction divided by sine x minus cos x divided by sine x. Again, that's one fraction. And we know that when we have a fraction divided by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I would have this multiplied by the reciprocal of this. I see lots of students, kind of when they get to this step here, is they start canceling cos x over cos x here. You can't do that because there's a minus sign after the cosine x here. So you can't cancel parts of sums. If there's a plus or minus before or after the term, if it's added or subtracted from or to something else, 
you can't cancel those things out. But, so let's keep going here now. So I've got cos x minus sin x over cos x times this. So in the numerator, I'm going to have cos x minus sin x multiplied by sin x. And in the denominator, I'm going to have cos x times sin x minus cos x. At this point, some stuff should cancel out. However, when we look at this, nothing initially appears to. We've got, we've got different terms in the numerator and different terms in the denominator. But, but, this term here is very close to this term. This is cos minus sine, and this is sine minus cos. So the only thing that's different between this term and this term is a negative sign. And so if I factor a negative 1 out of this term, I would have a negative cos x and a positive sin x. So I'm just going to write that as sin x minus cos x. So I've taken the negative out of that term. That term still sin x. Over cos x times sin x minus cos x. And now these terms are identical. And I can cancel those terms out. I'm left with minus sin x up top in the numerator and cos x in the denominator. And if I believe if we scroll all the way back up, we'll see that was the right side way back up here. Yep. Negative sin x over cos x. So we have proven that the left side equals the right side. So in this question, we did convert everything to sine and cosine to start with. Um, but then that didn't that wasn't all we needed to do. We had to get a single fraction in the numerator, a single fraction in the denominator, and multiply by the reciprocal. Well, let's look at this example. So we got sine x divided by 1 minus cos x equals 1 plus cos x over sine x. So our first little method of getting everything sine and cosine is not going to help us because it already is sine and cosine. And our second method, which was getting common denominators and multiplying by the reciprocal, is not going to work because we, we don't have any fractions within our fraction. It already looks very tidy. It's just that it's not the same on the left and the right. So a third little trick is to multiply by the conjugate. And if diagonally they almost look the same, so notice up here I've got sine x, down here I've got sine x, here I've got 1 minus cosine x, here I have 1 plus cosine x, so they're not quite the same, just the sine is different, then likely this is going to be the trick that you're going to use, multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate is the exact same thing but with an opposite sign. So if I had 1 plus cos x, the conjugate of that is 1 minus cos x. You did some of this in probably in a previous course when you were rationalizing denominators. So if you wanted to get rid of a square root in a denominator, all you'd have to do is multiply by the conjugate with the exact same, the exact same terms but with the opposite signs uh, in between them. So I could multiply the top and the bottom of the left side by 1 plus cos x, or I could multiply the top and bottom of the left side by 1 minus cos x. I'm going to choose the right side simply because I have more space on this side. So I'm going to take this expression, this fraction here, and I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 minus cosine x. That's not changing this expression because 1 minus cos x divided by 1 minus cos x is 1. Now, what we've got to keep in mind is we're trying to make this expression here the same thing as this expression here. So I'm supposed to have sine x in my numerator. When I look at this, this doesn't look like anything to do with sine x. So I'm going to multiply this stuff out, see what I get. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times minus cos x is minus cos x. Then cos x times 1 is positive cos x. And cos x times minus cos x is minus cos squared x. That's the numerator. The denominator, I'm supposed to end up with 1 minus cos x. So I actually have it right here. I don't want to multiply the sine x into here and here, because I'll lose the very thing that I want, want to keep. 
So I'm going to leave this one as sine x times 1 minus cosine x. And what I'm hoping is somehow I can get rid of this sine x so that I just get the 1 minus cos x in the denominator. Let's keep going here. So minus cos x plus cos x, those will cancel out. That's 0. So 1 minus cos squared x divided by sine x times 1 minus cos x. Now we're going to need an identity here. 1 minus cos squared, you'll remember this identity. Cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. So if I move this to this side, that would give me sine squared x equals 1 minus cos squared. So 1 minus cos squared, that's sine squared x divided by sine x times 1 minus cos x. This would cancel with one of those. And then left with sine x divided by 1 minus cos x, which is the same as what we started with on the left-hand side. So if you see the original question, and it looks like diagonally they're almost the same, then likely that's a conjugate trick that'll work to prove that identity. And so at this last example here, something else to keep in mind when you're doing any of these proving identities is you could always factor your expression. I think we're on our fourth little trick. Let's just see. Yep. So the fourth little trick is factoring. And um, when I look at this expression here, if I look at my numerator, there's a common factor here of 2 cosine x. So I could factor that out. In the first, first part here, I'd have 1 left. And when I factor out 2 cosine x, I'm left with cosine x left in the second um, part of the expression. And then I'm, now I'm dividing by sine 2x. And there's an identity for that. That's 2 sine x cosine x. And so now the 2s would cancel out. Cosine divided by cosine is 1, and so I'm left with 1 plus cosine x divided by sine x. And the use of factoring and the use of this identity for sine 2x has given us the left side equal to the right side. So some of the strategies to proving our identities first thing to always try is convert everything to sine x or cosine x. Um, if you end up having a fraction in a fraction, get a single fraction in the numerator and a single fraction in the denominator, and then you can multiply by the reciprocal. We could multiply by the conjugate. So if the expressions look diagonally the same, but there's opposite sign between the two terms, just like the example we did, then Multiplying by the conjugate might be a trick that works. And we can always factor the expression if that rises, and sometimes that helps us with simplifying the expression. So again, there's no, this is how you do every single question. Um, they're a bit like puzzles, and so you might try something and find that it doesn't work, and you might need to try something else. But these are some strategies that will definitely help in proving trig identities.